Today we are doing 10-7 special segments in a circle. This is from the McGraw-Hill geometry textbook. So this is talking about segments that intersect inside a circle. So when we see two chords that intersect and we're looking for one of the segments, how can we set up an equation? Well, if two chords intersect in a circle, the products of the length of the chord segments are equal. So it sounds kind of tricky, but it's actually not. When I look at this circle right here, A, B, A times B is equal to C times D. So if I take this chord and I multiply the two pieces, it's equal to these chord multiplying the two pieces, okay? It actually makes a little bit more sense with some numbers. So right here, there's a sample problem, but they just gave you the name of the line segments, okay? So we have A, B. So if I take these two segments, so here's this line, and here's that one. If I multiply, AB is 6, BC is X, I'm going to set it equal to the other chord line segments, okay? So I have EB, which is 8, and I'm going to multiply it by BD, which is 3. So that's in the basic form. I took the segments of the chord, I multiplied them, and I set them equal to the other chord segments being multiplied. 6x equals 24. Well, how do I get x by itself? Divide by 6 on both sides. x equals 2, 4. So we will have a, qu a couple questions that are just as basic as that. Make sure you get the two line, the two chord segments and multiply them by each other and set them equal to the other one. Okay. So go ahead and move on to question number one. This does say round to the nearest tenth place. So on some of these, we will have to round. On the first one, I'm going to take the line. I'm going to say 3 times 6 is equal to 2 times x. Okay, 18 is equal to 2x. How do I get x by itself? I divide by 2 on both sides. The answer is going to be 9. So now we'll move on to question number 2. This time, my one chord is x and x, so I'm going to multiply x times x. Is equal to 2 times 10. Okay, x times x is x squared. 2 times 10 is 20. Okay, how do I get the x by itself? Well, the opposite of squaring something is square rooting. So x equals the square root of 20. Rounding to the tenths place, x equals 4.5. Okay, we're going to move on. We'll do a couple more questions. Let's go on to question number four. So now we get a little bit harder, okay? Because now I have x's on, on both sides with another uh, variable. Okay. So the first side I'm going to set up, I'm going to say 3 times 6 is equal to <coughs> x times x plus 7. I'm going to distribute the x on the outside to everything on the inside. So I have 18 equals x squared plus 7x. Now the problem here is I have an x squared and an x. Since I can't factor out an x and get a term by itself or anything, I'm going to have to do some kind of either quadratic formula, I can graph, or I can factor. I think the method I prefer is uh, actually factoring. So I want to get everything to one side. I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides so I can set it equal to 0. Now, this is a line segment. It has to be a positive number. So when I get my two factors, one of them is going to be an extraneous solution because one of them cannot be the length of a segment. So if I factor, I want, fa I want, I put that in <coughs> negative 18. I want factors of negative 18 that are going to add to a positive 7. So what multiplies to x squared is x and x. That negative 18 tells me, negative 18 and a positive 7 tells me 1 is positive, 
one is negative. So what multiplies to negative 18 but adds to 7? Well, 9 and 2, okay. How do 9 and 2 become positive 7? A 9 minus 2. So however you want to work this out on the side, preferably I do factors of AC whose sum is B. So factors of negative 18 whose sum is 7. I would write down 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. And those are my factors of 18. How do I get a positive 7 out of those factors? 9 minus 2, which is how I knew that it was 9 and negative 2. I'm going to set each factor equal to 0. Okay. Again, one of these factors cannot be the length of that <coughs> chord segment. So I say x plus 9 equals 0, and I know x minus 2 equals 0. So subtract 9 from both sides, add 2 to both sides. My solution is x equals 2 because x cannot be a negative number. That's extraneous solution. We're going to do one more question on this page. We're going to go on to question number 7. And hopefully that gives you a good idea of what to do when you have chords that intersect inside a circle. So this time I'm going to take 6 times 5, and I'm going to set it equal to 2x times 3x. Now, yes, they both have x's this time, but one of them doesn't have a variable at the end, so I don't have a quadratic equation. 30 equals 6x squared. Divide by 6 on both sides. Then to get rid of the square, I'm going to take the square root of it. So the square root of 5 rounded to the 10th is going to be 2.2. I'll go ahead and write this here. That's all for chords inside a circle. We're going to go ahead and move to what happens when I have secants or tangents that meet outside the circle. Okay. So if the segments intersect outside the circle, what do we do? Um, the two products are going to be equal, each other, equal to each other. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter if they're secants or tangents. In this case, I have two set secants that meet outside the circle. If I'm looking for the, pro I'm gonna look for the product of the segments. It's, it's a little bit tricky because it's going to be the whole segment. So I wanna find all of AC and I'm gonna multiply it by just what's on the outside. So again, there's not really a formula here that I can say, hey, here's a formula to follow. But in words, it's going to be the whole secant multiplied by the external secant is equal to <clears throat> the whole secant here times the external secant. And we'll go ahead and start plugging in some numbers there so you can see. So question number one, I need to find out what the outside piece is and what the whole side piece, what the whole thing is. So the whole line segment, 16 plus 26, you add them together, the sum of them is 42. On the bottom, since I don't know what x is, it's going to be 18 plus x. So it's going to be the whole line multiplied by the external is equal to the whole line multiplied by the external. And I will set them equal to each other, okay? So 42 times 16 is equal to 18 plus x, all of that multiplied by 18, okay? is an equal sign. So the whole thing times the external 
equals the whole thing times the external. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just zoom in on the equation there. I'm going to distribute here, here, and here. So 42 times 16 is going to be 672 is equal to 18 times 18, which is 324 plus 18x. Again, I want to get my x by itself. I'm going to subtract 324 from both sides to leave that 18x by itself. When I subtract that 324, and I'll go ahead and write it here so you see what I, we did. We have 18x is equal to 348. Divide by 18 on both sides to get the x by itself. We are rounding to the tenths place. 19.3 equals x. And there is our answer. Okay. Question number two. Again, I have two secants. I see that these line segments are equal to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and write an 8 there. Again, I need the sum of the whole line on the top and bottom. On the top, 8 plus 8 is 16. On the bottom, 2x plus 6. So it's going to be, again, the whole line times just the external equals the whole line times the external. The whole line times the external equals the whole line times the external. I'm going to distribute inside my parentheses. I have three distributions again. I start with 16 times 8 is 128 equals 12x plus 36. I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. 92 equals 12x. Then I'm going to divide by 12. So when I divide, I'm going to get 7.7. .7. Now we'll move on to question number three. We just have a couple more questions to do. <coughs> okay, sorry. Okay, we moved on to question number three. This time I have a tangent and a secant. So it's the rule still applies that it's still the whole thing times the external. But when I have a tangent line, the whole thing is the external. So it'll be, basically it's the external piece squared. It's 13 times 13, okay? So we don't need to write 13 times 13, we can write 13 squared is equal to the whole thing. So we'll highlight the whole thing times the external. Nine plus five X times nine. I'm gonna distribute inside my parentheses. <clears throat> 13 squared is 169 equals 81 plus 45 X. Subtract 81 from both sides. I have 88 equals 45x. Then I'm going to divide by 45. Okay, so when I divide by 45, I get... 1.95 rounded to the tenth place means that 1.95 is actually going to round to 2.0.
that's rounding to tens place. Okay. We'll actually complete our lesson there. Um, if you like this video and want more, please subscribe to this channel where I should be uploading more as we go along.